Hello Cherries fans, hope you are doing well. You've probably seen on social media that Bournemouth have agreed a deal with Manchester United to take Ethan Laird on loan for the remainder of the season. He's expected to undergo a medical with the Cherries in the next 24 hours if he hasn't already. The 20-year-old is a defender and he spent the first half of the season on loan at Swansea where he made 21 appearances and we'll talk to our guest about how that went. His move is expected to be one of a number of changes at Swansea, actually, with manager Russell Martin chasing Matt O'Reilly as one of several targets from his former club, MK Dons. But to find out more about Ethan Laird, we've got Reese from Swans Away Days. Reese, how you doing, mate? Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm unfortunate about the video I've had to come on for, but yeah, it's always good to come back on the channel. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's it's not particularly great. But look, I mean, we've got memories of Ethan Led in a bit of a weird way, in the way that although we beat you 4-0 at Dean Court, he made it a torrid time for our left back, Leif Davis, for the first 20 or 25 minutes. He, he, he had a really good game. And look, he's played a number of games for you this season. Can you tell me a little bit about him and how he settled in at Swansea? Yeah, so obviously he was at MK Dons last season to Russell Martin, so that's why we signed him, basically. Martin knew who he was, knew he'd fit in the system. So he's a bit of an unknown quantity to Swansea fans, but to the goalkeeping coach, the staff members, and Russell Martin, of course, they knew him very well. Yeah, he's a right wing back, very exciting going forward. Defensively, he's been pretty solid this season. Um, so far, this season's not got a penalty, which is very surprising. I think he could have had a penalty at Bournemouth as well when he went down. But yeah, mm. surprisingly, he's not won a penalty. See him go down plenty of times in the box, dive or, you know, blame penalty. But he is a very, very fast going forward. Very strong going forward as well. You know, not afraid to take his man on. And, you know, he's, I'd say, you know, he would naturally be a winger. I would not be surprised if, you know, he played wing at one point. So he's a very, very confident young lad, 20 years old. And, you know, he's got a crack in future ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely superb. And look, I mean, why has this move happened? I mean, would you have, in an ideal world, wanted to keep hold of him for the rest of the season? Yeah, ideally, yes. He's been one of our best players by far this season. I'm very surprised that United have, you know, decided to loan him out to, you know, a promotion team, considering he's probably going to go on loan next season. But I can understand it from Man United's point of view. At the end of the day, Bournemouth are a better club than Son City right now in terms of where they are in the league and you know, players, so both are a strong, you know, candidate in the championship, so they probably want him to play with better players, probably a better manager in terms of experience, because Scott Park has been around quite a while now, so there's probably a good sense of, you know, move from Manchester United's point of view, good move from Bournemouth fans' point of view, you sort of strengthen that defensive team, especially when Steve Cook's just left, so you've lost a very good player there, so you've just brought in, you know, a, a, obviously a different player in terms of experience and position, but, you know, when you lose a player like Steve Cook, you need some more defensive players, and yeah, Ethan Lair, Ed, you know, will provide very good competition for where the all right back is. I think it's Jack Stacey. Um, mm. So it'll be good, good uh, opportunity for him to start. Yeah, I mean, Jack Stacey, his his form for FC Bournemouth hasn't been great recently. I mean, Adam Smith would usually play it right back, but he's got an injury that's relatively long term. Do you think Ethan could potentially be challenging and actually starting for Bournemouth at the moment? Definitely. Um uh... He's not cup tied, which is good for you. So, you know, if you do play him in the mm. FA Cup this weekend, it'll be a good opportunity to see, you know, if he can, you know, provide a good opportunity for Scott Park because, you know, it's a no risk game at the end of the day. FA Cup for the championship teams doesn't really mean much, especially when you're going for a promotion. It's just a game for some of the reserve players. So I think it's a good opportunity for Led to show himself. I think he may be on the bench in the first one or two league games of the of you know, your new season, of the second half of the season, I should say. And then he'll probably work his way into the the team we've seen you know Jamal Lowe make the move to Bournemouth he hasn't really got a run in the team because he's just not really done much off the bench and made an impact and, you know Jane Anthony's been excellent for you this season but yeah I think Laird will be similar to Jamal Lowe where he'll be on the bench for the first few games but I do really believe that Laird will make his way into the Bournemouth team and be a really big player for them and you said that really he could play right winger so I assume that's part of his attributes of the game that he he likes to sort of you know bomb up and down is that right because that's what that's how we play so it sounds like he would fit in quite well oh de- definitely he's more definitely more of an attack minded fallback than defensive fallback i think you play four at the backs so it'll be very interesting 
to see when, if you do play a four at the back, how he'll do at right back because he's definitely been playing right wing back for us this season. Bombs on. He has had a few little knocks now and again, but he hasn't really missed too many games of injury this season. I, I know I'm kidding on last season. He did have quite a long term injury and he, when he signed for us, you know, he was still recovering from that. So if you can keep him fully fit, it'd be good to see. And, you know, we've been heavily relying on this season. He's not only a, he was only our, you know, main right wing back, so we had no cover for him. But I'm sure, you know, Scott Parker will know that, will know when to give him a rest because he probably will need one. He's not played in a few weeks, but Swansea games have been postponed because of the coronavirus and, mm. you know, games being canned. So he's had a few weeks off and I think, you know, he's going to be raring to go. How's your season going then, mate? Because you're down the bottom half of the table. What's the plan? Is it just a rebuild this season? Yeah, spawn, to be fair. Um, just a rebuild, really, mate. It's not been a great start. You know, when we first bought a few weeks back, we were on good form. I thought I thought we played all right against you a lot for the first 20. You really minutes. did, as soon as that yeah. first goal went in, you know, it was game over and it was just unfortunate, really, because, you know, we took the game to you, we talked the league, I think you lost the press and then we were thinking, probably a good time for the first Bournemouth and, you know, full-time score comes around, it probably wasn't, but yeah, probably just mid-table this season. Yeah, superb, superb. Okay, so for people that don't know, can you tell people a little bit about your YouTube channel so they can go and check it out? Yeah, so my YouTube channel is Swans Away Days. I will be doing a video on Ethan Laird and what you Bournemouth fans can expect, so make sure you check that out. Yeah, I do match vlogs, match previews and all transfer news sort of around Swansea City. Um, I've been to every single game this season, but of course the one game I did miss was Bournemouth away, so there's no vlog for that one, unfortunately. But I did do a uh, match review if you want to check that out. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy my content. And I suppose it's all about the away games for you at the moment, because you can't watch them at home, which uh, must be hugely disappointing to not be able to go to the Liberty Stadium and cheer on the boys, eh? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a real gut and a really, you know, we can travel to Huddersfield on the 15th of January, but we can't go 15 minutes down the road, even a reduced capacity. Watch the FA Cup, it's ridiculous, but it is what it is. Nice one. All right, Reese. well, appreciate you coming on. Thanks very much for spending the time with us and uh, yeah, do make sure you check out his channel. Yeah, cheers, Reese. Fantastic to have Reese on there from Swans Away Day. So if you need any reminding, Ethan Laird is the guy that nutmegged Leif Davis three times in the first 10 minutes in that, mu in that match against the Swans, uh, Dean Court. You'd think he's probably going to get a fair amount of game time. Otherwise, it seems bizarre that Man United would recall him from a team where he's pretty much held down a first team spot. Maybe it's the style of football. Maybe Man United want to start to blood him in some of their sides for cup competitions perhaps and maybe they're looking for a side that's playing a little bit more competitively than where Swansea are at, at the moment. I've just actually re-watched parts of our 4-0 win over Swansea and I did notice though that three of our goals came from attacks down Laird side of the pitch but it's got to be remembered that he'll play full back for Bournemouth whereas wing back he's, he's not quite as good at. Not my words, but the words of many a Swansea fan. There's absolutely no doubting his quality getting forward and that's what Bournemouth want to see. Hope he's not as lazy as what the video in parts suggests, but look, everyone has a bad game and when you're looking at three goals that did happen down a particular side of a pitch, it's going to make a player look particularly bad. I think Scott Parker's probably seen the threat that Bournemouth have on the left-hand side and the, na and the natural combinations with Zamora and Anthony and he's kind of looked to the right hand side of the pitch he's thought well Christie's been doing all right but there's not really that synergy yet between Jack Stacey and Christie and maybe he's just trying to mix it up a little and maybe play a player that might have those natural combinations because ideally we want what's on the left down the right hand side to have more balance from AFC Bournemouth and look we've scored a hell of a lot of goals down the left hand side and really from the right not enough Christie's uh, last goal was was the first for AFC Bournemouth, but we need some more and maybe with a player that can naturally get forward and just combine better with Christie. Maybe this will be the right decision. It's going to be very interesting to see how he slots in. It should all be confirmed soon. But there you go. That is the latest of our lowdowns. As soon as there's anything more, we'll let you know. So there's a reason to subscribe. Make sure you do so below. And also, once you hit the bell, we'll notify you when any new stuff comes out. If you want to help us to get this in front of more eyes, make sure you retweet this very tweet on Twitter and also give us a thumbs up as well. We'll see you in the next video. Up the cherries.